on. They moved the sexual to level three sex offender in 50 feet from his house. We've never told the neighbors. Really? Been there since October 4th. You know what the sheriff said? Well, you got to go on the internet. I thought they're supposed to let people know when they move into the area. Well, they have to register. Right? To register. This guy's a sexual three. His violations have all been kids 11 and under. And he's uh, violent. Well, they've been very proactive in some of the other communities. I caught him in the hedgerow down at my son's place today on the hedgerow. I don't think he'd be in the hedgerow anymore. <laughs> okay, you get your rifle out? No, but I had an awful good talk with the guy. I couldn't believe it. that The, the neighbor didn't even know it. Daycare center right across the street. Jeez. I said to Jarvis, don't tell me he's on your website. He's not. Yes, he is. No, he's not. The girl called me. She's on the site. Boom. Up it come. So he wasn't on there. He's all about your hunting way in there. Uh, so, you know, be sure you watch where you're shooting. <laughs> <laughs> Call Dick Cheney, call. <laughs> yeah. You know where you turn to go out of the greenhouse? Yeah. Freddie's driveway goes in the back. He's right there. Yeah. Real bad character, too. Yeah. Shot and I don't understand. Claimed he shot at three or four deer and missed them all, but he hit him. Yeah, did you read that? I couldn't yeah, believe that. I not that either. I, I don't shoot that much in 10 years. Well, I never hunted any mile. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, okay, James, these are yours. We got everybody? We got everybody in there. Is all set? Okay. Well, good afternoon. Welcome to the uh, Bridge and Port Authority Facilities Committee meeting. Today's date, November 13, 2007, 3.15 uh, p.m. Cameras on. Cameras on. Sorry, wait. Not a problem. Um, the first item up for the consideration of the Facilities Committee is an easement with uh, St. Lawrence Gas. This basically... Um, <clears throat> Strictly an easement to extend natural gas service to the 14th industrial building now under construction over at the park. Uh, this eas easement allows St. Louis Gas to construct, operate, maintain, inspect, patrol, alter, locate, so on and so forth, um, a gas line to the building. And obviously, if it's acceptable to the committee, uh, staff recommends putting this before the board for action this evening. Do you need a motion or something like that at this facility meeting? Um, sometimes we do on formal stuff, and sometimes we just generally do consensus. It's okay. really up to the motion. Okay. Uh, we have a uh, have a motion on it, or, on it or whatever the problem matters. I mean, I think, we're, <laughs> I think the consensus. Yes, <laughs> we need it. Roger, you make it. I second it. I guess we're good, huh? Okay. <laughs> So we'll get this before the board for this evening. Okay. Second item up for your consideration is, actually I forgot to mention the uh, grant easement specifics are uh, attached there as well in the packet, along with map. The second item is the City of Ogdensburg, payment to the City of Ogdensburg for transfer utilities. Um, this is for the infamous uh, water line over in the industrial park, the one that uh, had some issues with it, that had a Senator Wright uh, grant associated with it for $50,000. Uh, the original memorandum of agreement said that anything over $50,000 would be the uh, expense of OBPA. The bill came in at uh, $54,826.52. Which leaves 48.26.52 for OBPA. There's a remaining balance on that. And 
And what I'm looking for here is just a general discussion or if you have any questions on this point. If not, if it's agreeable, we can put it before the board for both this evening. I have a question, Wade. I just looked at this this morning. Did we contact the city and review these invoices at all? Because I know I have. I thought you had received the packet. So I apologize. Yeah, I received the packet and I've looked at the invoices, but I haven't talked to anybody at the city about it. You haven't talked to Phil? No. Okay. Then I think we should withdraw this and hold it for next time. I apologize. Well, again, read the invoice on this. So that makes sense. Item simple. We'll table that one for In next time. In other words, you don't know whether I can agree to this or not. Then. Well, they're from the it's from the city. Okay. The invoices are from the city. They've agreed to it, and they're billing us for this. But I guess there's a couple in here that don't aren't straightforward to me. Okay. Uh, specifically, uh, repairing the fence. I guess I'm not too sure what that's it's all. Thirty-four hundred. So, Mark, you'll review the invoice. We'll bring this up next time again under the memorandum agreement. Anything over fifty thousand is OBPA expense. Who's fancy? Our fence. Don't know. We don't know what the fence is they're talking about. There's a fence at eleven hundred feet of water only. What are they talking about, Steve? Do you and Bill know? I, I, I'm like Mark. I, I don't know where the what, you know, any fence was involved in any of that. So that was the question, Eric. Temporary fencing? No. Nope. For, secu for security reasons? Mm -hmm. Nothing. That would have been all L&M's. You know, it said Butler. Yeah, I do because the only thing I have is just the voice from the city. The question of the fence, I don't Yeah, I got all the see fence. Got some backup, all the backup. Contractor and everything. Right. Very good. I apologize for wasting your time on that issue. Let's move on. Table that and get that back before you next time. One of the topics of uh, conversation last time was the in the industrial park was paving. Uh, we talked about the paving over the in the industrial park. You'll recall um, OBPA was to pay for uh, basically the labor and the trucking and the materials were to be picked up by the correctional facility. Uh, correctional facility backed out of that, and as a result, we have held on the uh, paving repair. We are waiting to talk with uh, DOT to see what other options are available, perhaps an entrance redesign or something along those lines. Um, and at this point, we'll probably be looking at uh, paving in the spring due to uh, weather considerations that way. But I want to give you an update on that. Now, this is around the new building? Or no? no, this is the... Uh, uh, part back of the old building. Yeah. Okay. Yes, the... the so uh, are they complaining the now that it didn't get paved? Or? No. <laughs> <laughs> they have a reason for backing out or... Their overall reason was uh, two reasons. Twofold, they didn't like the cost, and number two is the next tire up not approved in that direction. Even though that's what they had uh, had for two. So, what do you think is going to happen in the spring? Are they going to go to pitch in, or do you think it's going to be our nickel? My feel is going to be probably our nickel. I think the small repairs we'll take care of, and then we're just going to have to look at what Wade said if we can get some help there, but that. That first five, six hundred feet you know, needs to be addressed. It's something we have to address one way or another. But I think the small repairs we can, and I think that'll take care of some of their woes. But the, the other one, I think something, uh, something we're going to have to address. That was going to be a project for another day. Is that where your trucks are turning and tear the road up? Going around the corner? Yeah, but it's just, just between ACO and all the usage. It's, yeah. it's been, like, how many years? 15, 15 or 17 years. It, it really is time. Third item up for your consideration. I'll pass these around. I apologize. I only have uh, one copy, but it will give you an idea. Uh, CNS's thoughts on the engine house update. Um, specifically, there are two options that CNS has come up with. I do not have information on cost at this point from CNS. 
but the initial drawings show the blue building being, uh, there's two of them. There's one that shows the, and I apologize, I'm just going to show it on the screen here, but the uh, blue building tracks going into the blue building, and the existing uh, rail dock right here, so basically there'd be two spurs into the industrial park, is option one. Option two that CNS presented, option two is using the existing rail spur and putting a new building right, uh, basically right over top and above and around that uh, existing rail dock that's over there in the park. So I'll pass those around so you can take a look at it. And again, I apologize to the directors and work with the So for next month, we will have uh, some cost estimates in, as well as the uh, schematic that we'll be able to update you with that as well. That's it for items under the industrial park. Uh, on the bridge, there is one consultant agreement that needs to be discussed tonight. And specifically, Steve, you want to start walking us through that, please? Yeah, um, this is a result of uh, probably three or four meetings between Daniel uh, Peterson and the state of New York, DOT, and ourselves. But... Um, we're trying to work out a consultant agreement with Greenman Peterson. And we, like I said, we met three or four times. Uh, Jim, you were in on the first part of that. With that, and uh, can't remember, was that the revision one or was that the? That was the draft one. The draft one. Well, we had the second one was a revision, and the third one was just everybody getting together and um, just coming to term. Well, the numbers were already out in the first one, but right. the terms. On that, and the only issue I think that when the revision was uh, taking out some of the bridge inspection on that, and then there was a couple small uh, on the final one. They were really more uh, market. They were more legal, legal, uh, legal yeah. things. It's so an environmental issue that's not really part of the contract. Right. So far. Um, but if you see before you, you've got. Uh, the consultant agreement, and in that agreement, you'll see in Article 1, it's got all of the attachments. And uh, uh, this agreement form was uh, what the state gave us to work off. And so um, we, we tailored that, both of us, between Greenman Peterson and the OBPA, we tailored that to meet this uh, project. And then attachment, you'll see there's attachment A, that's the project description. Um, there's the engineering base scope of services. That's uh, the numbers Freeman Peterson gave to us. And uh, attachment C is the salary schedule. And those two, B and C, kind of match together. And I, Jim, you're more uh, you're familiar with that. Um, it, it's wordy and complicated, but we went over every bit of that. Um, and uh, I don't know, Mark, the state of New York. Um, the DOT was on board, and uh, although they officially didn't approve it because it's between us and Greenman Peterson, they uh, they had no issues. No, they accepted the the price within the base scope of the work within their acceptable ranges. Um, the two point three seven nine million based on the scope presented. Which did not include the construction inspection. Yes, it does. It does. That includes everything, yeah. We, we wanted, Jim, I, I think I mentioned we wanted to keep that all. Uh, we, we were just hoping internally they'd keep that separate, the design and inspection, but I didn't really, didn't go out for two different firms. No, I agree that. and the complexity, it would probably be appropriate to have uh, both a motion and a second on this one before we take this one.
Yeah, that you believe Roger would have documented that, that one of those. We have a maximum to be at 379. So 176, that's for a different phase, for different phases, Roger. Okay. Which phase are we on now? Well, one's for design and the other one's for construction and special. This includes both. Attorney looked any of this over. Yeah. Comfortable with it? Yep. We had a couple issues um, that had to do with uh, terms of payment. And what was the other one, Mark? Uh, liability limits for insurance. Talk about that. And, yeah. Uh, Fred, we, yeah, we went kind of back and forth over it three times, and it was lengthy. And it, it, Are you comfortable with it? I am. Because you recommend it? Yeah, because of the time spent. It. Uh, you know, but the thing is, that it's so big. I, I realize that people need to uh, kind of look it over. And uh, it's had its due diligence uh, from our council, as mentioned, uh, has been back for several times. You. Is there any areas you want to point out, Steve, that you're not comfortable with? You got some concerns with it anywhere? No, I think we we brought those up. Some of those were uh, um, like. There's a draft design that has to go out in the time frame of everything, and we kind of went back and forth. And basically, we were hoping the DOT would be on board with the speed. The, the, the longer we took, we would take away from some of the money we could spend later on just with rising costs. So Greenman Peterson had a pretty good schedule. Just our main concern was that the DOT would keep up with us, and they, so far they've been pretty good with all of that. So you're, you're happy that the committee can move this to the full board? I would be yes, but it's a large number, Fred. So that's you know I just well, that's why it's got to go to the full board. right, right. But so what's ready? Yes. So, this is really a not to exceed then, right? Yes, it is. We we may not. Yeah. Um, that that's the bottom line, and but you know we could come out at two million, it could come two two, but that's the top number that. Um, <laughs> an awful difference. It's going to span. What's that? Put a span. They could come to two, two. Right, right. I would expect you're gonna, you know, you're gonna come. You know how that works, Jim. I, I yeah, we usually end up going over. <laughs> right. <laughs> but as long as it's not going to see. If you look at the design fees, the design fees aren't bad. It's all in the inspection portion. Yeah, and and that'll be dictated by how the projects run with the. Uh, if you get a good contractor in there and they can hit a lot of those, um, it could short. If it shortens a project, that'll shorten the construction inspection. But you know, I'm not I'm going worst case, I guess. And and it, and it goes out to. If you look at that schedule, it's out to. I think we said 2008. Yeah, but it lasts Roger till 2010. Yeah. How do we get their portion of it? How do we get compensated? Will, will we be compensated before? We'll, we'll pay. Yeah, we'll pay an invoice, invoice and then have proof of payment, DOT and then DOT will, DOT will reimburse us. What's the typical turnaround time for DOT? To oh, let's think of maybe 14 to 16 days if we do it electronically. So you're not talking about putting your money out there for not for too long. No, <laughs> we may need a line of credit, not for this part of the contract. 15 million dollars yeah. construction contract. Expect there may be a short term line needed there. Now, will you be setting up a separate account for the electronic checking? And Not a separate account, no. Are you going to monitor? Just like everything else, we'll have our files and monitor. The money going out coming in. There won't be a separate physical bank account, though. That's necessary. Well, no, the DOT will do electronic transfer. Right, to into our existing account. They worry me. You let it come in and go out. Payments? <laughs> we got everything separate, so I don't have to worry about it. I tell them there's X amount of money they can put in the bank. No, that's no. That's our option, but <coughs> cut down the time by one week, so that'll be something. So you're yeah. going to monitor it. Good. Well, no, we're not doing electronic transfers out, just electronic transfers in. in. Yes. Yeah. yeah. The government's much quicker when you do that, I'll tell you. It's got 30 days off. Yeah. 
payment schedules using electronic. And I didn't see in here who's executing. Is Wade going to execute on WPA's behalf? I didn't see I'm not sure whether Mark, I think yeah, Wade or Mark are enough. Yeah. Yes. I didn't see a signature page. Um, yeah. Where is Mark Marshall? Yeah, I'd be authorized to uh, execute the contract. Selected the right firm here. You're going to do a great job. You got to have design and inspection before you get bridge constructed. Fred, did anything jump out at you uh, looking through it? A couple areas, but there was just that's why I asked you. The attorney looked it over. And oh, he's but I'm be glad to answer anything. They I didn't see anything. It's just a couple areas. Some movement there. Yeah. They are working on this now, right? Yeah, it's, uh, they're working on their own dime right now because of uh, um, the weather, just to get a jump on the uh, preliminary design. says this agreement has been reviewed and approved by. I want to change that word approved by to accepted by. That's fine. Uh, the DOT doesn't really sign off on it anymore. Who is this you're reading from the, or on the uh, resolution? The resolution there. Um, great. Uh, yeah, I talked to Nancy yeah. Haley on the phone about that. She's okay. happy with the word accepted. You know, okay. Accepted by. I'll second it. Thank you, sir. terminal. We've got uh, uh, the North Country Freight Needs Study. This is the comprehensive plan uh, for all authority assets tied in with the North Country Freight Needs Study. Um, in a nutshell, what this is, this was uh, based on the evaluation of the, cri of the sele selection criteria. Um, we recommend Wilbur Smith Associates at a cost of uh, $248,105. This was uh, done in consultation with uh, the staff, New York State DOT, and uh, anything else I'm missing in there? No. And that's the that's kind of it in a nutshell. This only begs the question, did these folks know going in with what we had to spend? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we didn't pick them because they were low. <laughs> And I, I know I missed the meeting, but my choice was actually Cambridge. What was so compelling that you guys like Wilbur Smith? I thought Shaw's was not that far right. Uh, Wilbur Smith had more experience with ports, and they had done the port master plan for uh, Port of Albany, and they had also done some. Uh, but that was your, so that was really your yeah. main reason. Okay. Yeah. And it was very close between the two. Majority rules, that's fine. And we have a very good uh, agreement, uh, ready for Wade to sign, and about a 25-page scope of services that basically came out of their proposal that we evaluate. I you know, made a few minor modifications, too, so this is good and ready to go, and it's conditioned upon final group from uh, the funding source of the state of New York, which is uh, probably going to be about 10 weeks, and uh, we'll be working with them to, in the hopes that they'll be able to start before that, actually. 
may as well come for a start at that. Uh, so then do we want to hold this resolution until we get that approval? No, because it's, it's, the resolution said it's, it's conditioned upon final. Funding. That's kind of the other way around. We need to have the uh, approval from OVPA first, and then that will uh, cue DOT to start the process of corporate control talks. What about difference in any of them? Absolutely. So again, on this one, probably given the order of magnitude, probably makes sense for a motion and a second on this one to move to the board. I'll make a motion. on these was 95, two and a half, two and a half between FAA and New York State DOT and Ogdensburg Bridge and Port Authority. Uh, what this does, it basically proves the airfield electric and airport, airport beacon project and obstruction removal on airport project. It's not easy to say <laughs> along those lines. We can see some additional information in the report section as well. And this has to be put out to bid, I take it. Oh, we already did the construction. Yes. Okay. So this is uh, strictly the, uh, it is kind of complex, but we basically go through and we approve each section of the grant. So in other words, we approve the FAA section, then we'll approve the DOT section and Bridge and Port Authority section. This is strictly the DOT portion of that grant. That so for the one project, it's uh, 94.50, and the, the second uh, project is 58.75. So if there's consensus there, we'll bring that one to the board. We included, uh, sorry, oh, sorry Steve, we ahead. included all the uh, things that came in for those projects at the last meeting, right? <laughs> like I remember seeing those. Yes. Yeah. 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 They're part of the record already. Right. That's right. Okay. We're having a pre-con for the obstruction removal this Thursday, and the uh, beacons, prob that relocation is probably going to start early spring. You might want to just bring those meetings tonight, so can I ask you questions on? Okay. I don't remember who that was, but here we get the structure. That's probably a good idea. Yeah, I don't remember who that beacon, to tell you the truth. <clears throat> who got the beacon? Yeah. I don't Collins Ham. Collins Ham, yeah. Yeah. 
The other item for consideration of the Ogdensburg International Airport to bring to you uh, for consideration. Um, again, no actions required. I want to update you on a fact that we learned while dealing with automated fueling at the airport. Our automated fueling system at the airport, and again, I apologize, the projector isn't working. We'll see if we can't get that fixed for the board meeting. This is our gas boy system here at the airport. Yeah. Um, so you can see exactly what it looks like. This thing is uh, basically an automated uh, card reader slash fueler. We have found out through the course of events that this system is no longer supported as of January or January 8th or something. Some oddball number January, like that. Right, yeah. Early January, anyway. Um, the... This answer, in a nutshell, here uh, is probably going to cost about fifteen thousand dollars to fix, in the grand scheme of things, and it has potential to its replacement has potential to use both tanks where the one right now just uses one. So there will be something brought before you, I would assume, December uh, time frame where we talk about this and have some more specifics. But we just learned that, and I wanted to share that with you, that uh, the future costs associated with that. It'd take a long time to pay that back on the fuel cell. Well, oh, you start flying more. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So we have, do we have a contract right now with somebody that provides services for credit card machine or dials it? Yes, we do the Ascent uh, Aviation. Fill them on 66. Through, okay. yep, through Ascent is the current system. It's about six and a half, seven years old. And now the decoder or the coder somewhere over there is going to be read as of the beginning of the 2008. But we purchase equipment, we don't just lease it, or they don't send a service that they provide contract? Well, we've got the option here to purchase fuel from them for three years at market value, and they'll supply the Flip. There's a couple different options out there, and we need to evaluate those and get them before the committee for next month. But again, that's something that uh, we just learned about that was uh, appropriate to bring to your attention. And also, same issue, the gas boy. And I'll get these, somehow we'll get that projector fixed for the board meeting. But uh, what you see here is the, uh, the gas boy's hose, if you will. Uh, during a particularly busy time at the airport, what happened here is we lost uh, some significant fuel sales due to the fact that one uh, airplane was parked in front of the gas boy uh, for the weekend. And as a result, what you can see in this picture is you see a 70-foot hose and a plane that has about uh, plane plus spacing has about a 75 foot wingspan. Yeah. Uh, problem is, uh, this is a particularly disheartening picture uh, because this plane right uh, here that you can see in the picture, I'll get it up on the screen. But while I was out to the airport taking these pictures, that uh, individual was flying to Messina to pick up about $2,500 of fuel. Uh, fuel. So it begs the question: Is how the guy parked there? Why did he park there? Don't have any direction on. This was a large plane that was parked there in its own right. Uh, we are somewhat constrained on layout issues, uh, lack of pavement, if you will, between where the old hangar is and where the new T hangers are. Uh, part of this issue that we'll have to address uh, at the facilities committee at some point is putting down some additional pavement. Uh, but this is a picture of the airport, kind of a peak capacity, and what it looked like and what it happened, what happened. You know, how we uh, when did not get those fuel sales. When did that happen recently? That was very recently. It was uh, it was alumni weekends at the university. So we'll be talking about the gas boy in, in the future for a couple of reasons. First and foremost, it's obsolescence, and secondly, because of the capacity issue talking about. The additional item here that didn't really have the category, so we decided to put it on there as Fort La Presentation. Fort La Presentation folks have uh, requested a letter or a uh, 
uh, motion of support, if you will, from the Ogdensburg Bridge and Port Authority. I wanted to bring this before the facilities committee. I couldn't see any reason why to be opposed to this conceptually, but wanted to uh, bring that uh, to your attention, that uh, this is something that we'll be putting before the board this evening if, if uh, the committee is in agreement. Item six is just uh, miscellaneous hodgepodge of items and uh, is not on the agenda. That includes our regular facilities agenda. Apologize for that oversight on our part. Make sure does not happen. I had, unless there are any general questions, or should be in, should be in there. Along those lines. 